Hi folks, so um, this is one of the videos that I'll be running on getting yourself up and running on Dirt Rally 2.0, um, making sure that you kind of feel more confident with the settings. Uh, it might be something that you just never bothered to look at before, or you might be completely new to it. Um, so hopefully either way, there's, there's something for everyone to pick up there. So in your service areas that you get at the at certain points in the championship and certainly on the first stage, just before the first stage, you'll get a range of options. So shakedown is where you get to take the vehicle out and you get to drive it and test if the changes you've made are appropriate or just to get a feel for the for the stage. So this is a tarmac stage. If I've never driven the tarmac stage before, um, I get to go out and get the first few turns in and perhaps even learn them or just to see what the, what the surface is like and whether or not I need to make any changes. If the vehicle's damaged, you can repair it. So the repairs are reasonably straightforward, and you have three options. You well, you have four options: do nothing, a quick fix, standard fix, or you can replace it. If you do a quick fix, it's obviously quicker. Um, it might leave it more susceptible to further damage. Um, but once you've done a quick fix, you can then no longer do a standard fix afterwards. So it would require you replacing the part on that one. If you do a standard fix, it's just the default fix. It will fix the part and it will be working again. It takes a little bit longer. It's usually around twice the time it takes for quick fix. Um, but that means you can further repair it in the future if you need to do it. Um, so some of the parts that are more likely to be damaged, so things like your wheel geometry, it depends on the, it depends on the stage, but you're probably going to find that you'll be damaging those um, a, a little bit more. So uh, And if you're clipping a few things, the radiator, so you might want to consider a standard fix. Uh, some parts can only be replaced, so lights can only be replaced. Um, so you need to consider um, whether or not it's even worth doing that. If you've not got any night stages, in the, don't bother replacing your lights it saves you a couple of minutes um okay so uh those are cover most of the options and um, replacements aren't necessarily aren't necessary unless you've completely damaged it or you've got some time and you want to just just swap those up um tire choice then is interesting on tarmac you'll get the wet choice as well um and then you'll have a choice of compounds and it will give you um usually the options are you've got more performance going all the way to durability and a lower performance um, I'll be picking this soft tyre because I'm on tarmac um, and I've looked at the stage which I'll kind of talk you through in a second. That will give me the most performance but it will wear quicker um, so its durability is lower. So you'll need to consider depending on how many stages you've got, um, do I need my tyre my to last longer? I could get a nice balance between performance and durability on the medium. Um, but it depends on how long you've got until you can change those tyres and how many tyre changes you've got left. There's none that comes up at the bottom here because you can pick whatever you want to start with. However, when you come back to the service areas, you'll find that you only have a certain amount of tyre changes left. So you'll need to think about that. And this image in the bottom right shows you what condition your tyres are in. Um, so you need to consider um, if it's worth repairing those, sorry, uh, replacing those uh, based on the track, the stages that are coming up. If you've got like a 15 mile stage coming up or something like that you probably need to consider changing it if it's warm wet is really important um, obviously these are completely new for this game um, and i'll show you why in a second spare tires uh to be honest i'll restart the stage if i've popped the tire so it's totally up to you if you're going to play it like that or you might be worth keeping a spare tire and if you want the full realistic experience but you reduce your weight so that'll um that should increase your handling and your, your acceleration so the reason that i say tires now if you look at your event, I have got um, two stages uh, about 12, 13 miles long and I can see in those stages that they're both dry. So I'd be picking this off compound. This little spanner and timer icon means I've got a service before that one, service area before that. So I'll be changing my tyres over to wet surface because there you've got wet surface and you've got wet surface. So um, I'll use my soft for these two, that'll last no problem, 15 miles easy, uh, probably easy on those, so well within that. And then these last two stages I'm going to need wet tyres. If you're on tarmac and you're on the soft compound or the medium compound, I've never tried the hard compound, I imagine it's probably worse, you'll find that you really struggle in the wet um, and you'll need to think about that. Like for example, if that was a dry stage and that was a wet stage, I'd probably take my soft tyres because uh, it's only 2.85 miles. I'll get the, I'll get more time out of that one than I would out of that one driving on the wet because you will be playing catch up if people have got the wet tyres on. However, if this one was wet and that was dry, I'd definitely be taking the wet. If you had these two here, you'd have to look at the amount of turns and where the straights are um, and, and what kind of braking 
no, well, it, dep it depends on the track, but more turns there's going to be more problems for you, so it becomes more difficult there. I'll do a separate video on tyre choice and things as we go through stages. Um, tuning the vehicle then is, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to look at was the running order and just discuss that. So it tells you what the weather's going to be like throughout the day, so it's consistent throughout the day. It tells you where you're going out. If you're on a loose stage, you'll probably find that somewhere around 10 is probably the best position to go out. Obviously, you don't get to pick it. But I'm saying if you're around there, it's a good position to go out. I'm on tarmac, so I don't know how far Code Masters have gone with this one, whether or not they're considering where people have cut that they'll be putting debris over the, 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 the corners and whether or not there'll be buildup of crap on top of the track, and whatever that may be. As it goes, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I wouldn't imagine they'd be able to go that far, but I'll be dead impressed if they do. I know on the stages with like gravel that going out first is a very slippery surface and going out late probably damage your geometry a little bit more so you might need to think about some tuning for that um, but on tarmac it should remain quite consistent and you can see just in the bottom middle there it shows you what level the surface is going to be degraded at so you don't need to figure it out for yourself based on your running order it'll tell you what what conditions that's like and you'll spot it and, and you kind of adapt to it as it goes it's really really good that they have added that so tuning your vehicle then is the final thing we'll look at. Um, there are lots of options here and we could spend a lot of time talking about this. Um, what I will do is a quick kind of guide to some of the things that I'd look at in this and I'll, I'll, I'll point out where you can kind of educate yourself and, and, and spend a bit of time playing around with it. Because to be honest, I could tell you a million things with it, but it doesn't make any difference because as soon as you change it and go out and drive it, you might think, oh, that's crap, don't like that, or you, you might have a difference of opinion. So on the top right, it will tell you what they do. I tend not to mess around with alignment straight away because other things have a bigger impact um, than that straight away. So brakes is one that I'd look at. If I'm on a loose surface, I'd want lower braking force. If I'm on a uh, firmer surface or tarmac, I want a higher braking force. The reason for that is loose surfaces with a high braking force will lock your wheels, you'll lose control of the car. Um, and you won't be able to turn, um, your input will mean nothing basically. So a high braking force on the tarmac is brilliant because I can treat it as a normal you know, normal car and I can brake hard and I can get into the corners. Um, and if I do lock it up, hey, that's me with the pedal, right? Okay, oh, brake bias um, tends to be front anyway, but you can put it towards the rear to give you a little bit more oversteer because you might be struggling with understeering some of the cars, especially some of the all-wheel drive ones. Uh, differential, the one that I jump to straight away is the um, the centre. And the reason for that is you can introduce oversteer in an all-wheel drive. So if you put it towards the rear, it will behave more like a rear-wheel drive car in certain conditions when you're powering through the corner. So that will give you a bit of a push around there. Um, if you're struggling and you find you're losing it in the corner, well, you can can send that over to the front you can change the difference between the wheels um, themselves or you can change the difference between the front and the back that's totally up to you um, but I would change this to begin with and then I'd have a play around with those falls and happy okay so next that you could look at is the gearing I tend to leave these as recommended um, essentially what it means is you can change your um, gearing short or long if it's short you'll get more acceleration you get a lower top speed if it's long you'll get a higher top speed and lower acceleration so if you've got a track that's uh, a stage that's really got lots of straights in it you might want to consider pushing it to the long end however rally um, gearing tends to be more towards the short end so that you can get your acceleration up if you um, get confident with it and play around sometimes i like to change some of the later gears ones that aren't used in acceleration um for the majority of the time it depends on the car sometimes you spend the majority of the stage in second third and maybe fourth um well first second and third probably um so those ones you can leave those with acceleration and you can maybe stretch the fourth and fifth a tiny bit to get you that top speed but to be honest how much of a difference it makes really depends on how how well you're going to be able to take that car down a straight and really make up any differences and um, it might be here or there uh, damping and springs okay so you can change quite a lot of settings here but the general gist of it is if you want to increase your stability you would have a firmer damping um, setup uh, if you're on a looser surface you're going to need to have it softer because any bumps that you go over will knock you off position so you need to consider the surface what I'll be doing to set this up for tarmac is I'll be firming up some of these because um, the bumps are going to be minimal I'm going to be driving over a reasonably small smooth surface so I want a quick return rate I want a firm um, I want firm suspension essentially and that 
means that if I cut any corners, yeah, maybe it might knock me a little bit. But to be honest, it's just going off a little bit of tarmac onto onto dirt and then coming back on. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, however, if you look at your stage and it, well, it's a surface type um, on the side, if you find that you've got dirt and you've got gravel, that's where it gets more interesting. Because if it's smooth, dirt, gravel, smooth, you need to consider that you might want to get somewhere around the middle um, and you could just leave those and see if you need anything whereas with tarmac though it's it's an easy win to just bump some of those up um, to make it a lot firmer same with springs it's tarmac I know what I'm going to be racing on the whole thing is is asphalt so I'd be lowering my ride height um, front and back to start with and then spring rates I'll be firming those up so that I can um, improve the stability basically because I'm not going to hit anything that's really going to throw it off so I'd firm those up and I'd do the front and the rear the same. Um, what you can do with them as well is you could consider uh, maybe a slightly higher rear ride height. I don't know how far their model's gone, but it might help you to, to kind of throw it around corners a little bit more, might make it a bit more twitchy. Um, it depends on the, it depends on how far the model's gone. I've not noticed or played around with that too much. I've just kind of tweak the main things as I said before um, anti-roll bars will essentially stiffen the whole car up so it will probably give you improved handling but if you're on an uneven surface you're going to have more problems with that so um, you apply your tuning and then what you would then do is you go to a shakedown and you chuck it about and you can play around with that as much as you want one thing I will say uh, is with the shakedown if you if you crash on the shakedown it counts it didn't count on dirt rally so uh, I like to crash it at the end of the shakedown just for fun because I knew I'd come back to the service area and it'd be okay um, I did that and I had a completely written off car halfway through a championship which wasn't so good but thankfully if you quit out and then you reload it back up they it forgets that you've done that so don't go through that heart attack moment when you just bin it into a wall uh, for fun and then you realize that you've just uh, crapped the bed so to speak so anyway um, there we have it uh, it's a general rundown of the surface uh, service area um, and should get you set up and just a little bit more confident with the tuning. Just have a play around. I could tell you a thousand things about it, but until you tweak those, um, have a look at the setup, tweak the things that I've suggested first of all, and then you can play around with the little bits. It might be enough for you. Um, it does improve your times though quite considerably if you get it right. It also does uh, have an absolute shocker if you get it wrong. But if you move it in small steps and you do the shakedown, you'll know exactly what you're going into, so it won't be so much of a problem. Um, all right, thanks for watching that. The, I'll be doing a couple of other videos. I've already got a pace guide, uh, pace notes guide up for Dirt 1. I'll be updating that for Dirt 2 because there are a few of the things you need to consider in this. It's a bit more of a realistic sim. Thankfully, the driver cores are a lot better than Dirt Rally. Uh, one which weren't bad at all but sometimes sometimes they were bad um, there are other factors to consider so I'll add those in uh, I'll have a wheel setup guide up for you as well to have a look at um, for one of the more popular wheels and pedal setups as well as generic things to do with that and I'll also be putting up some guides for uh, different cars different stages um, and some basic tips to get you going uh, especially if you're new to it um, or some that cover the changes between Dirt Rally 1 and this, so um, thanks for watching folks.